our next speaker is our course, one of our course directors, uh, Manos Brilakis, is going to talk to us about how to treat balloon uncrossable and undilatable lesions. Um, obviously, this session is sort of a hodgepodge of what we think are innovations in PCI. Um, so I think uh, you're, this will be really very exciting, Manas. Great, thank you. Thanks, Mr. Habib, and thank you all again for being this morning. There's been a change. Dr. Meran was supposed to give a talk, but she gave it yesterday because of, she had to leave earlier on. So a little more technical topic than the other rest of the session, but nevertheless, a little break from that. So a technical point about how to treat balloon uncrossable and dilatable lesions, quite a common scenario, as I will show you. In uh, CTO PCI, this is found in about 6 to 9 percent. This is from an early uh, single center series from Dallas. And when we look at the multi center registry, it's about 9 percent. And uh, the challenge with uh, balloon uncrossable is that it can be a fairly challenging problem to treat. But before you treat this, the very first thing you want to make sure is that your wire is distal in the distal true lumen. Because if it's not, then bad things can happen. So always, 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 before you do anything of the remaining things that we present to you, you're going to make sure if the wire is outside and you start pushing balloons and microcatheters, very bad things can happen, as you can imagine. So this is an example of a case, an RCA. Uh, the RCA was um, heavily calcified, as you can see, and these are the lesions you expect things can go bad. And interestingly enough, it was crossed very, very quickly with the Pilot 200. But then the problem is nothing else would go. A microcatheter, a fine cross would not go. A 1.5 millimeter balloon would not go. So how can you treat this? And there are two major categories. One is to do things to modify the lesion, and the other is to do things that can improve your support. And the first thing you do, usually a first line approach, is to get a small balloon, 1.2 to 1.5, or a threader, which is a combined balloon microcatheter, and then try to get through that. If it doesn't work, we do what's called the grenadoplasty, which is intentional rupture of a small balloon, and we say small, we mean 1.2 to 1.5, just into the lesion, that explosion might actually help you uh, modify the proximal cap. The reason you use those small balloons for crossing is because the marker is in the middle segment in contrast to the larger balloons where the marker is at the tip. So small balloons are advantageous for that perspective. This is the threader, which is a microcatheter combined with um, a balloon, and that's very crossable as well. And there is the glider balloon that has a bevel tip that can go sometimes through um, challenging lesions. Grenadoplasty, this is an example of this. You see what happens when the balloon ruptures, the contrast goes into small branches. Once again, if you do this, make sure you do this with a small balloon so you don't cause uh, other problems. If it doesn't work, go to second line strategies that are either modifying the plaque, which is various microcatheters, or the Carlino technique, which I will explain in a second, or the technique is called the wire cutting. We now have multiple microcatheters. This is the Corsair, the, one of the earliest ones. There is also the Corsair Pro that has a little uh, uh, softer tip. There is also the Caravel, which is lower profile. There's the Turnpike and Turnpike LP that you can torque in multiple directions. There's the Micro 14 that has the longer length and any microcatheter. There is the Tornus that's designed specifically for this, and you turn counterclockwise to advance. And uh, you can try one or more of these catheters and see if it will go. In this particular case, it did not go. There is a technique called the wire cutting technique in which you advance two wires, you get a balloon over the first wire, you inflate it against the lesion, and then you pull back the second wire, and that creates sort of a cutting effect on the proximal cap. So you can do these techniques. If it doesn't work, you can also use extra support. And there are two main ways to get support. One is to use a guide catheter extension, like Guideliner or Godzilla. The other one is to use various anchor balloon uh, techniques in which you get a balloon into the side branch. Of course, if you have planned early on and you have a big eight friends amplage guide for the right, that makes things much easier. And that's why for these complex PCIs, it's always good to plan ahead and go with the big guides. This is an example of the guide catheter extensions. And um, that was used in this case. It did not work. And then you should always remember that guideliners by deep, in, deep seating can cause problems. This is an example of injecting through a dampened pressure guideliner can cause dissection going back in the order. Obviously, something you're going to be very careful with. This is an example of what the side branch anchor is. This is putting a wire in a side branch and then advancing a, a small balloon in there that matches the size of the side branch, inflate at low pressure, six to eight atmospheres. That helps you give you support to push equipment through. You don't have to use only one in isolation. Actually, using multiple techniques at the same time is the way to go. You can use both a technique to increase support, like the side branch anchor, and the microcatheter or Carlino, which is essentially injection of little amount of contrast into the lesion. Uh, 
And this is an example from the early papers from Ajay Kirtan is showing that using the strategies together can be more effective than using one in isolation. If this doesn't work, then the next step is to use more plaque modification, and usually laser is the way to go. Laser has the advantage that you can do it through the, any standard 014 guide wire. You don't have to change for a small wire, and therefore um, uh, it's very convenient for these lesions, because um, ap apart from that, a therectomy, you have to actually put a wire, uh, a roto wire or an orbital therectomy wire through to do this. And uh, the laser, as you know, it's... Um, um, a very powerful, and it's the same wire, and then if you use some contrast in that, then you become you get all these bubbles uh, into the um, into the mix. So we don't do this for balloon uncrossable. We do this for balloon undilatable lesions that you cannot expand the stent after you put the stent into the lesion. Again, a therectomy, there are various flavors, but the problem is if you cannot get the microcatheter through, you cannot change your guide wire. You cannot do either rotational or orbital therectomy. And then we go final to the final steps, which are the subintimal techniques, essentially going around the lesion and crushing it. And this is an example of a subintimal technique. We have the wire through, but nothing goes through. We go subintimally, and then we go around the plaque. And there are many different variations of this. You can do things like uh, inflate the balloon outside the plaque and essentially modify it from the outside, or inflate the balloon distally, and that can anchor the first wire, and then you can advance the balloon over the first guide wire. So different flavors, of course, these are advanced techniques. This is an example of getting a wire subintimally in that lesion and then getting a small balloon distally. And then by doing that, we were able then to advance. You can see the, 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 the ne next balloon very easily over the initial guide wire. So advanced techniques, obviously subintimal techniques have challenges but can be effective. In this particular case, we had to go down the algorithm every single step until finally the subintimal techniques were successful. Another option is to go retrograde and use it for anchoring or modifying the lesion. And uh, this is an example of a, of a CTO that was, uh, could not be crossed, similar to the one I showed you before. The wire goes through but the balloon does not go through. We did a reverse card, modified the lesion, and eventually we were successful in this very small diffusely diseased vessel. So having this algorithm in mind is very useful because then you can, and this is not for CTOs only, it's for any lesion, you cannot get the balloon through after the guide wire through through. Having this in your mind helps you move through those steps faster and get success quicker. And quick mention on the balloon dilatable lesion in which the balloon goes through but then the lesion doesn't crack up. And the main thing for this is to understand this and prevent doing anything until before you put a stand in. Because it's much easier to do things to a lesion if you don't have a stand. Once you get a stand in, it's much, much harder. Then you're pretty much limited to either high pressure balloon or laser and laser with contrast to modify this. We do have some um, more things coming down the line. There is the lithoplasty, the shockwave technique that uses same concept with lithotripsy to crack the plaque. And there's also a high pressure balloon called the OPN balloon. You can inflate up to 35 atmospheres safely. They can crack many of those plaques. But otherwise, the sequence is you go through a high pressure balloon first. You can use one or more body wires to modify the plaque. An angioscope works great, but sometimes it's hard to deliver. And then laser, as I mentioned, can be very, very useful. Uh, and then you have a therectomy, of course, and then uh, subminimal lesion cross is a very, very last uh, step. And this is an example of a circumflex lesion. Uh, we um, could not expand it despite high pressure balloons, several balloons ruptured, going 25 to 26 atmospheres sometimes, it didn't work. And then in lesions like this, doing a therectomy can help b before putting the stand, of course, because the stand comes in, a therectomy is not a good idea. Um, and then endoscalped, and then um, the balloon now is expanded. The stent gets a nice result. Yeah, so there is many, many techniques like this. There is uh, the CTO manual coming out very soon, and CTO cases online. You can find descriptions of several of those cases. But to summarize, the prevention is key for lesions like this. It's good to have in your mind an algorithm for treating balloon uncrossable and dilatable lesions. The key components of this is plaque modification and extra support, and then having the equipment and techniques can help you handle this effectively when they happen. Thank you very much again for coming this morning.